Welcome to The Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and the Rings of Power actor Morford Clark has some more dumb takes about the upcoming Rings of Power premiere. And she said a lot of dumb stuff in the past, you know, the classic, uh, shut up about your criticism, it's definitely a perversion, just go away, she's had some really dumb things with that. That in correlation with the whole Amazon Studios are going to count as a victory regardless of actual viewership i guess they really don't care about her coming out and saying all this dumb stuff because they're gonna say it's a victory either way but she's had some really dumb stuff in the past i really don't like her in the role and now i'm starting to just not like her as a human being but maybe she's a better person in actual personal vicinity but she's just had some really dumb things and there's a new interview out with her from the gq that is far worse and so it's a really long one mostly about personal stuff but there are a few brief comments that I want to go over from her and one of her directors but yeah she she's manspread in this picture too it's not just a thing that she did for Rings of Power it's something that she actually does so maybe Galadriel does uh, pack a little heat that we weren't aware of because yikes but yeah, most of this interview is very personal stuff or past projects, stuff like that. Nothing too, too crazy, but it's here that I wanted to get into it. So this might be the GQ talking, or it might be her. They don't make it very clear, but they're just talking about how television is an evolving form of entertainment. That's not necessarily true, I guess. Television's been a big deal for a long time, but whatever. And they do say here it's comprised chiefly of material of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Cimmerillion, which is wrong. That is factually incorrect. They do not have the rights to any of it and they keep saying it in random places that they have rights to it as if to entice people book fans it's like hey we have rights to the book you like when they actually don't they do go on to add that they do have rights to the impendencies of the third book of return of the king which is true and that is all the show is based on they do not have rights to the simurillion i don't know why people aren't getting in trouble for saying that they have rights to the simurillion if i were the Saul's ants company or warner brothers i'd be hitting them hard to say no just talk about what you have rights to like, they don't have rights to the word hobbit but they keep using the word hobbit they are in breach of their contract in so many different places but nothing's happening to them i i feel like the Saul's dance company or embracer once that transition actually happens should jump on shit like this because yeah they do not have rights to similar really just a side note here that i wanted to point out is that yeah they keep saying that they have rights to similar really they don't they have no rights to anything but the appendices. But this is what I really wanted to get into, is these are some comments she had about the role of Galadriel herself and why she was attracted to the role of Galadriel. And this is where things get really dumb. Uh, she's grateful to the character for letting her play gross, having been cast in prim and pretty roles before that. So Galadriel, one of the most prim and pretty characters, I guess, according to that, it, it, she's being cast as that character. But it's like, ooh, we're changing her to be gross. I like being gross. Let's be gross together. No, the character is prim and pretty. If you didn't want to play a prim and pretty character, don't audition for Galadriel. Now that's on the show as well for changing her from prim and pretty to being grim and gross. But it's still not the character of Galadriel. So she went into it. She In the here, she says she watched the movies and loves them and loves the books. But if she went into an audition being happy that she could play gross as Galadriel... She misunderstands the role of Galadriel fundamentally because Galadriel is not a gross character. She's not one who gets in the dirt. She's not one who does any of that. She is ethereal. She's beyond the carnal desires of men when it comes to the nudity that we're going to see, which I'm not looking forward to. But it's just a fundamental misunderstanding right off the bat. But it does get worse. Galadriel is beautiful, yes, but played in the films by Kate Blanchett, the elf leader is the mortal source of counsel and calm, too. That's her primary deal so they do understand what Galadriel is supposed to be but it's like we, we want to make her gross and said I can't get over that word usage she's happy that they allowed her to play gross Galadriel the chief among the elves she is like the most wise the most powerful being in nearly all of middle earth one of the top powerful beings in all of middle earth but we get to play her as gross that's really exciting from a feminism is it like gross that word, I just hate that they use that word. And they clearly understand that she's supposed to be a mortal source of counsel and calm. But they decided to make her gross instead. That is the biggest downgrade in history. That is what I call anti-feminism. They're taking a woman's strength and robbing it of her and forcing her to act like a man and be gross. That's what they believe feminism is. I would be insulted if I were a woman. I'd be insulted if I were Kate Blanchett or anyone who really has a love and investment for these books and these characters because that's not collateral. She's not gross. 
Uh, in Rings of Power, she is a little bit younger, though still thousands of years old. They keep saying that. They're constantly like, oh, this is a young Galadriel, so it's okay that she's being all warrior-like. It's okay that she's being gross. It's okay that this and that, because she's young. No, and they, as they go on in just a second here, she is thousands of years old. She's not young by even Elven standards. But they're constantly like, in another interview, she said, oh, I'm so glad I got to play a young Galadriel. Oh, uh, a Galadriel, she's young, so she gets to do this. They keep using that as an excuse, though they admit Admit, right here she admits she's thousands of years old that's pretty old even for elves these people are so freaking stupid they, they they just want to have their cake and eat it too they wanted a young brash you know classic captain marvel aggressive female character and they didn't care how they got it and whatever excuses whatever lies that they need to come up with are small price to pay for getting that character that they want clark said she's older than the moon Yes, she is. So she should be acting a little bit ethereal beyond the, you know, customary concerns of mortals and man. And she should not be acting young. This whole obsession with her being young is the dumbest thing ever. So she's young and gross. That's what she's excited to play about the character. Though she admits she's older than the freaking moon, Clark said. Uh, Clark therefore needed to think about what yo youth and naivety meant for someone who was already ancient. She wouldn't be youth or naive. They're still trying to excuse it away. She's like, oh, yeah, she's thousands of years old and, like, older than the moon, but I want to play her naive and young, and that's what the writers want, too. So how do I make an ancient person naive? You don't, because that's freaking stupid. F dumbass. They're just coming up with the most superficial excuses for their awful behavior and their awful treatment of these characters to do whatever they want. This is pathetic. She's like, yeah, she's older than the moon, but you, she's still young and naive. No, those two are mutually exclusive. So I guess part of what was slightly more rough in writing this, a bit more earthy, less, slightly less godlike. Why? Why? I, I cannot fathom the thought process that she's going through here. She's thousands of years old. She's older than the moon, but uh, uh, she's gross, and she's naive, and she's a little rough and uh, earthy. That's not who the character of Galadriel is. That is a fundamental misunderstanding of Galadriel and shows why fans are rejecting you and this entire project because Galadriel is none of those things, especially at this point. If you want to show like a 50-year-old Galadriel being young and brash, I don't want to see that, but at least that would be explainable. But you're, you're even admitting she's thousands of years old. She should not be acting young, naive, and earthy. She's earthy and gross. That's what the, 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 that's the type of words this woman is using to describe her character. That is not who Galadriel is. Why do they constantly show that they misunderstand these characters, but still have the evidence right in front of them that she's thousands of years old? These people are so stupid, and they don't care about the source material. Like I said before, they wanted their Captain Marvel strong ramen type, and they didn't care how they got it. Any little lies, any manipulations that they ha were coming up with were a small price to pay to get their Captain Marvel woke strong whammon. And it does get a little bit worse here. Now, these comments here come from one of the directors of Rings of Power, and these are not great comments. Apparently, this guy was involved in the casting process. Apparently, Gladger was the first one they tried to cast. From the very beginning, we knew that she was going to be the woman. What does that mean? Yeah, the character is a woman, but it's the woman. <laughs> it goes back to the Captain Marvel deal. It's like, ooh, we need to cast the Captain Marvel type first because everyone loves Captain Marvel. But what the does that mean? We're, she's going to be the woman. <laughs> she's grim. She's dirty. She's earthy. And she's the woman. Not just a woman. She's the woman. This director is nearly as bad as Morford Clark. She was so strong and there was a little bit of anger in her eyes that made the character so attractive. Why is Galadriel angry? That is not her type of character. That's like the whole She-Hulk line is being angry and afraid is the baseline of a woman just existing. No, Galadriel should not have a bit of anger behind her eyes. She's thousands of years old. She's kind of beyond human emotion, human anger. The only time we should see her angry is that bit in Fellowship of the Ring when she gets tempted by the ring and she passes the test to be able to go on to the Undying Lands. We shouldn't be seeing anything like that in the Second Age. We shouldn't be seeing this anger behind her eyes. They don't understand Galadriel, and so they're casting her for the wrong reasons. Morfin Clark, they cast her for the wrong reasons because there was anger behind her eyes. So they made this other character who wasn't Galadriel, and then they were looking for a character to fill the role. They just so 
fundamentally misunderstand this character. It's horrific to watch. I just can't fathom the mindset of someone who reads actual stuff about Galadriel. And he's like, you know, she's young, stupid, earthy, gross, and she's angry. She's just really angry. I want some anger behind those eyes. These people, man. That tells you a little bit about what the show is about. How far would you go to defeat evil? That is entirely contradictory to the points of J.R.R. Tolkien. That's the whole point of it, is that it is not... The ends do not justify the means. You do not make yourself evil to go forward. No one picking up the ring to defeat Sauron. That would no one for would that be a good option for anyone. Gandalf would become something far worse. Galadriel would become something far worse. So they're saying, how far would you go into defeat evil? That is contradictory to all the themes of the Lord of the Rings. Is that it is never worth it, and you should never do that. And Galadriel, all characters would know that better than anyone. But these people, they they, they don't care, and they want to do their thing now. In a different story, that isn't a bad thing to ex explore. How far would you go into evil? In my own writings, I explored that a little bit. But it is contradictory to J.R.R. Tolkien's concepts. And that is makes it a bad adaptation. And they fundamentally don't understand it. They don't understand Galadriel. How much would you sacrifice? That is a personal sacrifice, sure. But how far do you go into defeat evil? That is the problem. That is so against everything that J.R.R. Tolkien stood for that is so against everything that made these characters special and it just at every turn they say these things they come up with these awful explanations for why they change the characters and at every single opportunity they prove that they do not understand either the works and themes of Tolkien in that portion there or the characters of Tolkien with everything they said about Galadriel meaning she's dirty she's angry she's earthy and she's naive it, it, it's hard to really fathom how much they misunderstand it, even though the evidence and what they need is right there in front of their eyes. And they're going to ignore it because they wanted their strong Captain Marvel type. And it, it's really offensive to anyone who even has a tertiary knowledge of J.R.R. Tolkien's incredible work. But yeah, that's that's all that this article really had besides personal stuff and stuff that I didn't really feel like talking about. But overall, we got our man spread and Galadriel. And that's what's important is not the character, not the world, not the actual themes of Tolkien. But this woman being the new Captain Marvel type to being big and strong and dirty it's just gross why is galadriel gross but that is what galadriel the actress behind galadriel thinks galadriel should be that's pathetic and i am not looking forward to rings of power coming out but i will be doing a review on it when the time comes but anyway that's all i have for today i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video anon If you like what I do here and want to see good, compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern-day mental illness issues. Books 1, Down in Flames, and Book 2, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book 3, Kill the Dark, coming soon.